Hey everyone, Ryan from e Bike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Magicycle Cruiser Pro Fat Tire Electric Bike, so let's get into it. Before we get into the walk around, I have one quick favor. If you are looking to purchase any Magicycle electric bike, please check out the link in the description. Clicking that link before your purchase is a free and easy way to help support the channel. So thanks in advance for your support. We'll also throw some other resources down in the description as well. Our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's get into the walk around of the Cruiser Pro. Now you might be a little bit confused. Why do I have another Magicycle electric bike here? That is because last year we reviewed the original Cruiser that launched as a super affordable fat tire e-bike. In fact, I think they launched this electric bike at around $1,300, maybe even less than that. And that garnered a lot of attention. That's one reason we did a review on it. And since then, they have added a variety of models. We'll throw up a few of them on the screen. But the next generation of the Cruiser is now the Cruiser Pro. And just as far as pricing goes, they seem to mix up pricing depending on the current discounts. The Cruiser is right around $1,599. And we have the Cruiser Pro at right around $2,000, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. And it seems like they always have a discount code going, so be sure to check out that link in the description to see current pricing on the Magicycle Cruiser. Now, the other reason I wanted to bring out this bike, not only to just talk about it as another offering, is that it is very, very similar to the Cruiser Pro. In fact, I think at a glance, you wouldn't even really know which one is the Pro and which one is the original Cruiser. But we have the Cruiser Pro. They call it a step through, but it's really a mid step. And then this is obviously the high step. And I'm going to call out the main differences between the Cruiser and the Cruiser Pro, just in case you are considering both of them. Let's start up here in the front with one of the major differentiators. These are Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The other Cruiser just has mechanical disc brakes. So they opted for the Pro model to have upgraded brakes, not a surprise. Really like these brakes, they perform really well and they're paired with Tektro 180 millimeter rotors. As far as tires go, of course, this is a fat tire electric bike. So we have full fat tires, 26 by four inch. Kenda tires, they have some knobs on here, certainly capable of going off road. And I really like that they included the reflective sidewall, adds additional visibility while you're riding at night. The bike comes fully outfitted with front and rear plastic fenders. We also have a front light, looks very similar to the ones we see on Rad Power Bikes with this heat sink up here. But one thing to note is that this just has one LED in the center as opposed to the Rad lights that actually light up around the side. Now with most of these lights, they offer some visibility during the daylight, but if you are riding a lot in the daylight, I really like the external rechargeable lights. Of course, that can help you see a little bit better than some of these integrated lights as well, though they are integrated and I use them all the time and leave them on nonetheless. In the front, we do have a quick release, so it is very easy to remove this front tire. And we have a Magicycle, really an unbranded front fork here, though it is slightly different than the front fork that came on at least my Cruiser. Not sure if that's something that they have upgraded. There is a preload adjustment on the left side, and then we have a lockout on the rear. I'll go ahead and push on that front suspension so you get an idea of what to expect. Certainly going to help with comfort either on the road or if you do decide to take this bike off into the trails. 
I always like to point out some of the finer details like cable management. I think they could have done a better job here. They did try to keep some of the wires here together, but I've seen companies that wrap all of these together and then they enter the frame in a nice clean way. Now in the front of the Magicycle, as we see on many electric bikes, we have four bolts here. They do sell some aftermarket accessories, front rack, as well as a front basket that you can add on here if you want. Let's move on to the cockpit of this electric bike. We have the full leather grips that I see on so many electric bikes. If you want something locking, you can certainly upgrade to the Ergon grips. Check out our video on that. On the right side, we do have a right hand twist grip throttle. Again, another full leather grip. And then of course we have the Tektro hydraulic levers. Again, these feel really great. And on the left side, they do include this bell. And we have the same display and controls as are found on the original Cruiser, as you can see. And on the right side for shifting, we have a Shimano Sys Index 7 speed shifter, an entry level component, but so many e-bike brands use this. And in my opinion, it functions just fine. Now the handlebars here, they have a slight swoop to them and you'll note that there is no adjustable stem. So if you wanted to be in a more upright riding position, you could add an adjustable stem. Now on the original Cruiser, they have these front handlebars that have a little bit more of a swoop to them. Let's move on to the display. Now I really like the functionality of this display. It is an LCD display. Now that does come with its downsides. In really bright sunlight, it's difficult to see the screen. But for instance, right now it's a little bit overcast. There's some clouds and I can see the screen just fine. But what I really like is just how much information is on here and the advanced settings. So walk through what we have here. We have a battery capacity in the top left hand corner, time in the top right hand corner. We have current wattage as well as current miles per hour. I'll go ahead and hit the throttle so you can get an idea of how this looks when you're riding it. And in the bottom left hand corner, we have trip as well as the pedal assist level. It comes stock with seven levels of pedal assist. But again, I'll show you in the advanced settings here in just a second, some of the customizations you can do. And hitting the I button will give you additional information odometer, max speed, average speed, time, and back to trip. Now there's a lot of electric bikes that I review. You get into the advanced settings and there's all these P settings. And unless you have the manual in front of you or you review electric bikes like I do, it's hard to know what each of those settings do. But let me show you what Magicycle has in their display. You get into the advanced settings by holding the plus and minus button at the same time. And you get this really nice menu. You can see we have wheel size. I wouldn't touch that. You have speed limit, comes shipped as a class two electric bike. Override at your own risk. You have screen brightness. I have that turned all the way up. Voltage, don't need to mess with that. Dormancy, units. You can add a password, factory reset. There's display. That allows you to reset the trip meter. And in the advanced settings, you have some of the features that you might want to play around with. Now make sure you fully understand all of these features, but the one that I think a lot of people are going to want to pay attention to is the power set. So if I go in there, hit I. Now what this allows you to do is change the pedal assist from zero to seven to one to seven, zero to nine, one to nine, zero to three, one to three, zero to five, one to five, and back to zero to seven. Now what's even more great in my opinion, if you hit the I button again, you get to change the power levels at each pedal assist. So you can see this is how it comes stock. Pedal assist level one, 40, then it goes to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then pedal assist level seven, of course, giving you 100%. So what I really like is you can customize this depending on your preference. Now keep in mind in the upcoming first person riding footage, this is how I left these settings. And of course, it's going to differ. The performance is going to differ if you go ahead and change these settings. Also in here are some settings for sensitivity and slow start. Again, you can do some further digging in the Magicycle instruction manual if you're looking to learn more in here, or you don't need to play in the advanced settings at all, but I do like to show it off. And I really think Magicycle did a good job putting this display on this electric bike. And again, it is the same one that is found on the original Cruiser. 
Let's talk about frame design. Now, I already mentioned this is the mid-step design. One of the, I guess, challenges of this frame is the battery is just so massive. So they did what they could with this top tube. And certainly if you're putting your foot here, it's going to be a little bit easier to get on than say the high step. But even here, they made this a little bit lower so it is easier for you. But keep in mind, you have these bottle cage bosses here. So if you put a bottle cage here, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to get your foot over. So something to keep in mind, depending on what frame you're looking at. There's some branding here, of course, on the battery, 52 volt. Again, that's one of the standout features of this electric bike. It is a 52 volt system. There's also some branding in the rear here for Magicycle. And one of the things that I also wanted to call out is the location here of the controller externally mounted. Now this is one thing that I like to have seen changed about this electric bike just because it's so exposed. I'm not sure what the other options would be. Maybe they could extend the frame and put the controller over here. But what Magicycle has decided to do is keep this frame design, but now they offer a skid plate. And I happen to have the skid plate here. It's actually a piece of thick plastic and this can be purchased, I believe it is $39 and you can actually mount it to the bottom here. And if you do plan to take this bike off road, it's going to protect that controller as well as protect some of the cables underneath the frame right here. So really nice. I believe this is an accessory that Magicycle went ahead and offered after hearing from customers. So they're certainly keeping it in mind, getting feedback from customers and making changes. Speaking of accessories, Magicycle does include, at least I received a free hat and with the cruiser, I did receive a top two bag. So when you're on your website, they'll show you the, the free gifts that they're giving you. So another kind of bonus compared to some other electric bikes. Next, I'm going to remove this massive battery pack. I already talked about how this is a 52 volt battery. And this is really what garnered a lot of attention when Magicycle first released their original cruiser because it came with a 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery. And at that price, you simply did not see anything in the market with that big of a battery. And most of the times you don't even see 52 volt systems. But with the Cruiser Pro, you get a 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery, massive capacity. That is certainly one of the main differentiators, especially when you're looking at electric bikes in this price range. And you can see there's a sticker down here, 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery. Now the battery isn't integrated into the frame, but it kind of looks like it is just because of the design of the frame and the battery. And there is a charging port here. And it does come with a three amp charger, slightly faster charging than you see on some electric bikes. Standard is a two amp charger. And you do have some buttons here that will give you an idea of the current charge of the battery. Now you don't need the key in for the battery to work. Now this battery is very easy to install once you get used to it. And I actually like that it comes out from the side just a lot more user friendly, but there's a little clip here that kind of punches in to the battery here. And all you need to do is slide it into place really easy. Moving on to pedals, we have the metal Welgo pedals that I see on so many electric bikes. Certainly get the job done if you want something with a bigger platform or a cool color. There are other ones you can purchase on Amazon. This bike does have a cadence sensor, you can see it there. So as soon as it senses that you're pedaling, it's going to engage the motor. Rear kickstand, beefy kickstand located towards the rear and no chance of the pedals coming in contact with it when you're moving it around. Again, Tektro hydraulic disc brake here in the rear. We do have a torque arm here, which I always like to see, just an additional safety mechanism keeps the wheel where it's supposed to be. And we do have the motor cable coming in on the left side here between the dropouts and the rotor. Another thing that I really like that Magicycle includes is a rear rack, 25 kilogram max capacity pannier hangers here, very sturdy rear rack. And they even give you these elastic straps, which is nice. So you don't necessarily have to go out and purchase something. These can help you load down some cargo. 
Again, we have that plastic fender here in the rear, as well as a rear light. Now it might look like the light is flashing with the lights on here, but it is not. That's just the camera. And when you hit the brakes, the light does go brighter. And if I turn the lights off, the brake light still works. So an additional safety feature that I really like. A lot of companies are moving to rear lights that are actuated by the brakes, which I really like. Let's talk about the saddle briefly. This is actually a pretty comfortable saddle. Above average, it is branded Magicycle. If you find that you want something more comfortable, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list. Moving on to the rear here, we have a Shimano Altus rear derailleur. Again, a component we see on many electric bikes. Always like to see the name brands. And of course, this gets the job done and there is a barrel adjuster in case you need to adjust it. And you do have a derailleur guard here in the rear. Something to make sure is if you're unboxing a bike, any electric bike that has a derailleur guard, make sure it's not pushed into the derailleur because that can cause issues. In the rear here, we have 14 to 28 teeth. And in the front, we have a 42 tooth front chain ring, double-sided metal, very durable, really like that. And we do have a chain stay protector branded here. So no chance of this frame getting nicked up if you do decide to take this bike off road. And finally, the motor. This is a 750 watt motor that Magicycle states peaks at 1000 watts. So stay tuned. We're gonna get to the first person riding footage and we'll see what this motor can do. Okay, first person riding footage on the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. Just a note, I did go into the advanced settings. You can do so by holding the plus and minus pedal assist buttons at the same time, and it's very user-friendly in there. I did go ahead and override the speed. I don't necessarily recommend that you do so. I just like to show off the full power of these electric bikes. It does come shipped as a class two electric bike, which is the legal limit in many different states top speed of 20 miles per hour with the throttle, again, override at your own risk. Our first test will be the top speed test with throttle only. I do have the speedometer app by Coolnix. And just a note on this display, I have polarized sunglasses on and I cannot see the screen at all. And that's something that's the case with some of these LCD displays. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only. Fairly quick pickup here. Seven, 14, 18, 19, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27. And it looks like 27 miles per hour is going to be the top speed. And when I was in the advanced settings, the highest they allow you to change the speed to is 28, so not surprising. Now I do get the question quite a bit. Can you pedal electric bikes if you run out of battery or something goes wrong? Hopefully that doesn't happen. But yes, you can. It's just going to be a, a bit of a workout, I would say. I'm in second gear here with pedal assist off and Putting in a fair amount of work, I could go down to first gear, make it a little bit easier, legs are spinning a lot faster. So flat ground, I mean, you're not going to go very fast. I'm going about 10, 11 miles an hour, it looks like. Though hills are going to be a pretty significant challenge, so do your best not to run out of battery. Okay, let's go in the various pedal assist modes. Start off here in pedal assist one. And still in second gear, I think I could shift up to third gear here, going about 10 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Feel the motor kick on a lot more there. Felt like pedal assist one, felt nice and easy. Didn't really jerk me or anything. Uh, fourth gear here on the right, going about 14 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Again, feel a pretty big jump there. Going to go in the fifth, could maybe even go in the sixth gear. I always like to ride where I'm providing a decent amount of effort, um, an amount of effort that I could provide for a long time. Sixth gear feels pretty good at 17 miles per hour here. Go ahead and take a right here. 
kick into pedal assist level four. Now, of course, if you're starting from a higher pedal assist level, it will kind of get you up to speed a lot faster. Would want to go into seventh gear here. We're hitting about 20 miles per hour here. Okay, we're on another straightaway. I have it in pedal assist level five now, seventh gear. Looks like we're up at 23 miles an hour, right around there. And I still am providing my own power, which is always nice. Usually when you get up to 20 miles per hour, it's hit or miss depending on the bike and the gearing. Let's go into pedal assist level six. Legs starting to spin a lot more here. Here's 26 miles an hour. Probably a faster cadence than I'd personally prefer. All right, pedal assist level seven. Now that's going to be 100% of the power and still holding us. There's 27 miles an hour. And given our top speed test on throttle alone, that's not surprising that that is the top speed with pedal assist. And as I shared earlier in the walk around, there's so many advanced settings that you can change in here, how many pedal assist levels you have and the power at each. So this is just how the bike comes stock, but that's how powerful it is on flat ground. Let's get to our hill climb test and see what this motor is capable of. All right, hill climb test. One thing I did want to point out is even in pedal assist level zero, you do get access to the throttle. That's just something that differs depending on the electric bike. This is the hill climb test that we test out all of our electric bikes so you can compare and contrast. We'll put a picture on the screen of the hill because it looks so much smaller on the GoPro. We'll also throw the specs of the hill up there and we'll see what this bike can do. Now I have noticed on the display here, it shows you wattage and it looks like, at least according to the screen, it's hitting 900 watts right now. So we'll get up to speed here and then see what the bike can do on throttle alone. I'm expecting a minimum speed around 14, maybe 15, somewhere right around there. I do know when I reviewed the previous cruiser, it was very powerful. Going down to 20 here, 19, 18, 17, 18 and I also have the tires at about 20 psi usually the max is about 30 depending you can look at the sidewalls but usually I put the fat tires at about 20 and there's 16 And again, it's pretty much pegged at 900 watts the whole, the whole time up the hill. So very impressive hill climber in my opinion, about what I expected for this bike. But I always recommend pedaling, getting some exercise. It is an electric bike after all. All right, I'm gonna head back down the hill. We'll go up the hill while pedaling. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. Just wanna note, on the way down is usually when I test the brakes. I'm very familiar with these Tektral hydraulic disc brakes and they perform really well. I was up to, looks like 30 miles an hour down the hill and the brakes had no problem. Getting me to a stop, in fact, at you know some point when you're pulling on these brakes, you're just gonna lock up the wheels and, and start skidding. So you need to be careful if you're, if you're going that fast, but very good performance from these brakes a component that I've really liked on the electric bikes that I've tested. All right, I'm gonna get started here and make sure we're in pedal assist level one. And I did shift down here. And really the hill is starting just about now. All right, third gear, pedal assist level one putting in some effort, but I could go up the hill like this. Uh, we're using, it looks like 400-ish watts, 460 or so, 470. 
500 now, uh, even in pedal assist level one, going about nine miles an hour. Of course, you, I do have room to shift down if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two, feel a bit of a boost there. Could probably stay in third gear, maybe go up to fourth gear here, going about 12 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Going to have to move through these pedal assist levels a little faster given there's seven, there's 15 miles an hour, can maybe go to fifth gear, pedal assist level four, 16, 17 miles an hour, maybe sixth gear. All right, uh, pedal assist level five, still going to about 17, I could still shift up. Pedal assist level six, and I didn't notice a whole lot of difference between those last few pedal assist levels. It seems like it's pegging at uh, 900 watts regardless. So we're going 17, 18 miles an hour. It's a powerful bike. You'll have no problem. Even in pedal assist level one, if you wanted to conserve some battery, all right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. The Magicycle Cruiser Pro is one of these maximalist fat tire e-bikes. These brands seem to always be trying to eke out an e-bike with slightly better specs than the one next to it, figuratively speaking. Most of the time, the battery, both size and voltage, is one of these key specs. The Magicycle Cruiser Pro is an e-bike right around $2,000 depending on the day. And just a note, the bikes seem to bounce around price-wise even depending on the color choice and high step or step through. And like many other brands, you can save up to $300 when purchasing two e-bikes. Again, link in the description below. So if you're looking for a 52 volt 20 amp hour battery, then there might not be much else on the market in a full size fat tire e-bike. Magicycle states these batteries are using LG cells and the Cruiser Pro has a max range of 80 miles. Seems plausible in our experience if you're traveling at reasonable speeds in the lower pedal assist levels on flat ground. And not surprising given my experience with the standard Magicycle Cruiser, the motor performed very well in our testing both on flat ground and up our large hill climb test. The hydraulic brakes are a nice upgrade as well and I'll just shout out the display once more. The ability to customize the power levels with the easy to use LCD display is a nice perk. Beyond those features, this bike sports many of the same components we see on many fat tire e-bikes from the Kenda tires, plastic fenders, lights to the Shimano shifter and derailleur. I do like that they include the rear rack and a front rack is available for purchase if desired. These fat tire e-bikes are going to be best for tall riders and Magicycle recommends them for riders 5'5 to 6'5. The Cruiser Pro has a total payload capacity of 350 pounds. I already pointed out the location of the controller which exposes it on the frame, but that shouldn't be a problem for most riders as long as you're not cruising over rocks Plus, there is a skid plate available for purchase if you want that extra protection. Perhaps the only thing I'd like to see is an adjustable stem to allow you to customize the riding position, though yes, it is a part that can be purchased easily from Amazon. So the value of this e-bike is certainly there spec-wise on this e-bike. The 52 volt 20 amp hour battery is hard to beat and should temper any range anxiety even from the most ambitious adventurers out there. Magicycle has been in business at least selling e-bikes since 2021, so they are a relatively new brand. They're also a Chinese-based team, meaning customer support and their engineers are in China, and they are selling direct to US customers, and it looks like they have a Canadian warehouse now as well. As a reviewer, it's hard to comment on customer support, so if you are looking at making a purchase, be sure to do a quick search to see how they help out customers if there happens to be an issue. We always like to hear from owners down in the comment section below, so let us know your personal experience there as well. And if you do decide to purchase any e-bike from Magicycle, we certainly would appreciate it if you use our link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support e-bike escape. Thanks in advance, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.